Hey, hello. Um, welcome to the video lecture of Triple E Twenty Three. As promised, I'll be recording the whole lecture one vector analysis. So you'll have a reference once you review it. So uh, let me emphasize again the importance of vector analysis in Triple E Twenty Three, since uh, our uh, equations. The equations that we use in electromagnetics uh, revolve around vectors. And it's important to know how to uh, do the math behind them. Okay. So first, uh, let's review what are scalars and what are vectors. Basically, you already know this. A scalar is a quantity whose uh, value may only be represented by a single real number. So it's just uh, represented by a magnitude, as we call it. A single real number could be positive or negative. An example is your height, the temperature of your body or the temperature of the area, and speed, the speed that you are moving. Vector, in contrast, is a quantity with both magnitude and direction. And you need at least two scalar values to actually represent it. An example is force and velocity. So force uh, needs uh, uh, force is a vector because it needs direction to be defined. Our focus for Triple E Twenty Three will be only on the two-dimensional and three-dimensional space. And just note that uh, vectors actually are uh, defined for n-dimensional spaces by your uh, linear algebra. But uh, in reality, we'll just uh, focus ourselves on three-dimensional space because that's what we see in the real world. Now, vectors are usually represented by a direct ray, something like this. So it has an endpoint and uh, an arrow on the other side. So just by convention, any variable that is a vector is written in is written in boldface and has an arrow above it. So it could be this, or this, or maybe even both. It's in boldface and has an arrow above it. And that's fine. So uh, just note that when you write it again, just put an arrow. Can't argue that if you've written a, written a letter, it is in bold. Okay? Alright. Now, uh, fields basically uh, may be defined mathematically as a function of a vector which connects an arbitrary origin to a general point in space. That's the formal definition of a field. Basically, it's just a function. So don't be afraid by this definition right here. It's just a function of a vector, specifically a position vector. So that's an example here. A scalar field would have a scalar output. And that's the big difference between a scalar field and a vector field. An example of a scalar sorry, an example of a scalar field would be the density at any point P within a volume. Basically, uh, the distribution of mass that that's also possible. Distribution of mass within your body is a scalar field. The distribution of gravitational pull, however, is a vector field, but it's related with the distribution of mass within a body. Okay, so that's actually your vector field. Basically, at any point in space, we can have a vector on that point. So it originates from that point and has a vector value. For example, this pattern right here could be a uh, wind pattern. As you can see, the wind kind of originates from this point right here. And at this point, the wind has a certain vector that defines its direction. Also here. At this point, the wind has a certain direction. And here, from this point, the wind has a certain direction. There you go. So that's an example of your vector field. Another example of a vector field is the magnetic field of the Earth. Uh, so as you know, magnets point from north to south. Basically, your uh, magnetic field flows from your... Uh, magnetic north to your magnetic south. So in this case, uh, the magnetic north is in the south pole. 
But actually, uh, scientists have been tracking the magnetic north. It's actually moving. And around uh, 1950s, I think it was north of Canada, around north of Canada. And it kind of moved nearer to the geographic North Pole. So it's a, there's an interesting article about that, so we can search for it. The movement of our uh, magnetic North Pole. Oh, right, anyway, let's go back here. So of course, when you have quantities, like of course your real numbers, your real numbers have a set of operations. Vectors also have a set of operations. And one of those is vector addition. So vector addition, basically, well, just add vectors. But how do you add some values that have direction? So vector addition kind of works like this. Okay, so there are two methods to add a vector in the graphical sense so if you have vector a here and vector b here you can actually connect their tip to tail and you can form what we call a resultant vector which is the addition of both vectors okay sorry okay so something like this this is your vector a and uh at the tip of vector a you connect the end of vector b and you just draw vector b from here there you go. And finally, when you connect the tip of, sorry, the endpoint of vector A to the tip of vector B, there you go. This is your uh, sum vector or the sum of your vector A and B. That's what we call tip to tail method. Uh, another method is actually using the parallelogram method. So the parallelogram method, well, as you can see here, your uh, vector A and B can be transferred from this point B to this point A to this, and it forms a parallelogram. In the diagonal of that parallelogram, from the both the endpoints of A and B, can be uh, or can be drawn to the other end where the arrowheads of A and B meet, and that vector right there is their sum. Now we have a vector subtraction. As you know, vectors can have a negative value, but that just means it, but that just means that the vector has a uh, it or flows in the opposite direction where you defined it. So if you define b to have this direction, but actually it's negative, then the real direction of b is on the other side. Okay. So vector subtraction is basically just vector addition but you negate the other vector. This expression a minus b is actually just a plus negative of your vector b. Okay, so let's put an arrow there for convenience. There you go. So it's actually just the addition of the negative of a vector. So if you have vector b originally is this one as compared here, and uh, you get negate it, basically you just flip it in the opposite direction or you flip it 180 degrees. Okay. There you go. So you flip it 180 degrees, then you add the vector. So you just do vector addition, which is, well, this is the parallelogram method, and you'll get the resultant vector A minus B here. Okay. So uh, properties of your vector addition is actually similar to uh, addition in uh, scalar fields. So uh, vector addition, commutative property, basically if you uh, switch the order of the vector, doesn't matter the result is still the same associative property is when you group the addition of two vectors differently the result is still the same so if you add a and b first then you add c you still get the same result or if you add b and c first before you add a you still get the same result okay so what now if we multiply a uh, vector by a scalar this is actually your second operation for vectors, scalar multiplication. So this is the one difference between your scalar field and your vector field. Actually, a scalar field, uh, as you know, we can multiply it with another scalar. But for a vector, you can't directly multiply two vectors. And physically, that's not really intuitive or it doesn't make any sense at all. But when you multiply a vector by a scalar, you actually scale the vector so if you multiply a vector 
uh, vector by a scalar, you kind of just scale. You kind of just scale the vector. What do we mean by that? I'll show you that later. But first, we need to look at the uh, how a scalar multiplication works. Scalar multiplication obeys your associative and distributive laws. Of course, they are scalar. So any properties from your scalar fields actually carry over. So uh, in this case, now, if you have two scalars and you add it, and uh, you multiply the uh, sum to the addition of two vectors, well, you can actually distribute it, in it to that vector. Excuse me. Or you can distribute this expression to the other side. There you go. Okay. So, you distribute a, a plus B to the other side, like this. And from here, you can actually distribute the scalar to each of the vectors. So, you'll result with this. So, a scalar can be any real number. If it's negative, then the vector uh, reverses its direction. Now, uh, dividing a vector by a scalar value is just actually multiplying it with the reciprocal of a scalar. Kind of the definition in scalar fields. When you multiply, I were sorry. When you divide two numbers, you're actually multiplying the first operand by the reciprocal of the second operand. So that's also true with your vector multiplication by a scalar. So now let's move on to the coordinate system, more specifically the basic one, the Cartesian coordinate system, or also known as the rectangular coordinate system. So it convention, uh, the convention is uh, following what we call the right-hand rule. So the right-hand rule, as you can see, uh, actually forms a Cartesian coordinate system. Uh, the pointing finger is your x. The middle finger is the y. And the thumb is your z. So this is the result of that right-hand rule. If you're using the left hand, well, actually, you'll point on a different direction with z. So you have to be careful when using this rule when you're drawing coordinate systems. So why do we use the Cartesian coordinate system? It's the simplest way to describe a position in space. So how does it describe a position in space? You have an arbitrary point X. So it's somewhere along... Sorry. Let me just... There you go. You have a, an arbitrary point x, so it's so just somewhere along the x-axis. So let's say it's here. Then you have a value of y somewhere along the y-axis. From this point, if you add that value, it will just flow or it will just uh, go to that point intersecting your x and your y. And finally, when you have a point z, you'll just add an elevation and you'll finally get your point x, y, z. So actually, this is the most, or uh, this is the simplest way to describe a point in space. So it's defined by this box right here, or what we call a sorry, what we call a rectangular prism. Okay, so that's actually the cart the definition of Cartesian coordinate system is, it's uh, in its simplest form, it's just a defined by a rectangular prism right here. So other coordinate systems are based on other shapes or other solids or other surfaces, etc., etc. For now, let's look at the uh, Cartesian coordinate system or the rectangular coordinate system. So uh, each vector in this space can be defined by its components. So the x coordinate or the x component is equal to the distance from the yz plane, basically just the x component Y coordinate, the distance from the XZ plane or the Y component. And Z coordinate is the distance from the XY plane, just your Z coordinate. So, basically, um, your X coordinate is just your distance from this plane. And that is this length right here. Okay. When, and your... Uh, and your y coordinate is the distance from xz plane, this plane right here. So this is your y coordinate. And finally, your z coordinate is the distance from your xy plane, which is this one. And this is your z coordinate right here. 
So, that's your point in space. Let's say uh, a vector is formed from the origin where x is 0, z is 0, y is 0 from the origin to the point P in space. So, this vector, let's define it as this one, r. So this vector can be broken down into three components in the uh, Cartesian coordinate system. We call the we call them the component vectors. So it represents the value of that vector in each coordinate, x, y, or z. And you, if you add that x vector, which is from here to here, okay, your y vector, which is from here to here okay and your z vector which is from here to here so if you add them it should result into your vector r so let, let me retrace that again your x uh, vector is this length starting from the origin so around this length there you go this is your x vector your y vector is from if you add it to the x vector is from here to here there you go sorry for the sloppy drawing so this is your y vector if you add the z vector it's from here to here so when you connect the tip the tip to the tail you actually get your resultant vector r so that's what we mean when we have component vectors if you had the, if you add those three components it will result into the vector you are describing. So any uh, vector in the com uh, car uh, Cartesian coordinate system can be defined by its x, y, and z components of that vector. Okay, so let's move on to uh, special types of uh, vectors. Uh, unit vectors are basically vectors with unit magnitude. What does that mean? One unit of magnitude. If we get the magnitude of that vector, it's 1. It's directed along the coordinate axis. So uh, that's our, the, those are your unit vectors in your Cartesian plane. And this, these are the symbols. Normally in physics, they use this, i hat, j hat, and k hat. But in AAA23, we will use ax, ay, and az. So it could be bold-faced or it could have an arrow. So I think in, uh, tri uh, sorry, in ES11, they use lambda to describe unit vectors. Basically, they're just uh, vectors with a unit magnitude of 1. So what does that mean? So your ax here is a 1 unit or a vector of unit length 1 or length 1 that is uh, pointing towards the positive x-axis. So this is your ax hat or ax. Uh, same goes through with y. Going along the positive y-axis and finally, same as Z. There you go. These are your unit vectors. So again, their magnitudes are 1. So we can actually describe all vectors from these three unit vectors. So what are what uh, what do what is special about them? How do we use them to describe a vector? So remember what, uh, what are the implications of scalar multiplication? So let's go back to that. Scalar multiplication is when you multiply it. So let's erase that. If you multiply a vector with by a scalar, let's say you have a vector A. If you multiply a uh, scalar, so let's uh, change the color of... Let's say, there you go. So if you multiply it by scalar R, let's say the value of R is greater than 1. You actually increase the magnitude of sorry. You actually increase the magnitude of the vector, but it's still pointing in the same direction. Okay. So now imagine, then. Uh, in this case, you have a value x naught, which is the length of the component of your vector in the x-axis, multiplied by a vector with magnitude one. Then, the value of the x component is actually scaled towards the value of the x coordinate right here. Same is true with this. Same is true with this. So basically, if you have three scalar values x, y, and z, or in this case x not, y not, and z not, 
we can actually use them to describe any vector in the Cartesian plane. For example, we have the vector connecting the origin to the point 2, negative 3, and 1. Basically, we just substitute this to this, this to this, and this to this. And, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, okay, so basically you'll get this position vector right here, 2ax minus 3ay plus 1az, where 2, negative 3, and 1 are the component scalars, and the whole thing are the component vectors. So, now, with this, you can now visualize what is RP. So, that is two units in the positive x-coordinate. So, two units in the positive x. Three units in the negative y-coordinate, since there's a negative sign right here. So, that's from here to here. And then, you add another one uh, above or on the positive z-axis. So, from here to here. Now, you, just, you have already added them. Then you just connect the starting point to the end point, And you'll get your resultant vector right here. So any arbitrary vector can actually be described using these uh, unit vectors and three scalar values. Okay. So now, let's move on to distance vectors. So the vector RPQ is a vector whose tail is at P. And the uh, head or arrow is at Q. So if you have two vectors starting from the origin, P and Q, the distance between P and Q, or RPQ, is the vector from P to Q. Okay? So by definition of your uh, vector subtraction, actually, the uh, vector RPQ is equal to the value here, which is RQ, minus the value here, which is RP. And that is this equation right here. And for example, uh, RP is this, RQ is this. The distance vector is given by, well, just basically, just this is just algebra. You just add the components that are matching together. So something like, uh, let me illustrate the solution for that. So, something like you have RP equal to 2AX. So, okay. Minus 3, sorry, 3AY plus AZ. RQ is equal to negative 4AX. Minus 1 ay. And finally, 2 az. So now we get the distance vector rpq. Sorry, this should be bold face. There you go. Which is equal to rp minus rq. Okay. So substitute that to those equations. So finally, you'll get rpq equal to substitute 2ax plus this plus this minus the quantity there you go now recall from your uh, algebra that you have to isolate the values or the terms with the same variables you need to treat these vectors as variables you can't add them by themselves, but you can add uh, values with the same variable. So you add this az to this 2az here. You add this to this. You add this to this. And you'll get rpq, this value. Okay. So now you have the distance vector. What if you're interested with the actual distance between them, not the vector? So you can get the value of the or the length of that distance or the length of that vector by using what we call the vector norm for any vector b defined by its components bx by and bz the magnitude or the length of b can be obtained by using this formula right here and it it uh, it's actually from your um, 
Pythagorean theorem. So let me illustrate that. So from this, let's say you have a uh, uh, ignore this first. Let's say you have a vector b. So your vector b, sorry. Let me fix that. So your vector b is projected along this point. There you go. And it can be broken down by these components here to here to here and there. There you go. So this is your x, bx, sorry, by, and bz. So the length of that is bx, the length of this is by, the length of this is bz. How do you get the length of b? So imagine then first that, so let's clear that out. First, so vector B. Let's use another ink color. Say it's green. There you go. So imagine first uh, connecting this vector to a point or projecting it on the xy plane. So the xy plane from the origin, we can connect that here. The length of this is BZ, and the length of this, uh, I don't know, let's say it's A. The Pythagorean theorem, since the uh, Z-axis is perpendicular to any, uh, any point in the XY plane, then this is perpendicular to this. Then the length of B is equal to the square root of BZ squared plus A squared. But what is the value of A squared? So the value of A squared can actually be defined by the length of y b or this is actually your by and this sorry this is actually your bx and your by right here so that's your by and by virtue of your x and y axis this is perpendicular to each other so their their hypotenuse is a so basically, a squared is equal to bx squared plus by squared by Pythagorean theorem. Substituting that to the expression for b, you get this expression right here. Okay, so now we define then the unit vector in the direction of b or small a sub b. It's given by this formula right here. So recall the fundamental property of a unit vector is, ha is that it has a unit magnitude. The unit vector that is uh, pointing along the direction of B can be computed by B itself. You just need to divide B by its magnitude. Which kind of makes sense because if you take the norm of this, if you take the norm of this, it should be 1. So if you take the norm of this big equation right here, well, since norm is a linear property, you can distribute it over your um, division. So that's just the norm of B divided by the, basically this is the norm of B. Correct? So the norm of B divided by the norm of B, you'll get 1. And that should be the property of your unit vector. So for example, given h is this, what is the norm of h? Well, just use the formula. If you forgot the formula, remember Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so this forms a triangle with this, and this length here forms a triangle with this. Pythagorean theorem. Then to get the unit vector of that vector, we'll just need to divide that vector by its norm, such that the vector norm of this unit vector is 1. This is an important part of, or this is an important definition of your unit vector. And you'll encounter more unit vectors as you move away from Cartesian coordinates. So now let's uh, formally define vector field. So vector field is actually a function of your position. There's a vector on that point in space defined by the, by the value of that position. 
So the notation is that for any position vector r, the vector field is uh, typed in bold capital letters g or g of r to make it more uh, precise. So to compare the scalar field is this notation. It's not bold. Okay. So an example of your vector field is this for r given in Cartesian coordinates. The uh, vector g can be defined, or uh, vector field G is defined by this equation right here. Each component is dependent on the value of the position. Okay? So now, given a position, your uh, vector here, given you're at the point 1, 2, negative 3. Find the value of G of RP and the unit vector at that point. So, to get that, first... Just substitute. So you'll from your vector you'll get one to negative three. That's your position. That's the point. Okay. Substitute that to the expressions, and you'll get a vector output, which is now your. Sorry. This is now your. Uh, G of R. Now, if you want to get the norm, well, the norm is straightforward. You just need to get the. Square root of the sum of squares of each component and you'll get this value right here. The unit vector is just you divide that vector by its norm and you'll get this expression right here. Okay. So that is the end of part one of the lecture. There are two more parts uh, upcoming. And uh, you can use that for uh, additional review material. Okay? So this, the next part would be what we discussed uh, last meeting. Or uh, that was Friday. And the, next, and the third one will be a new one. Okay? So it's just an expansion of your vector analysis. And how do you use these uh, definitions of a vector to uh, different formulas in... Physics, sorry, in uh, Tripoli 23. Okay.